So I'm delighted to welcome Nick Ford today to Fin Spotlight. Uh, Nick is the VP for Distribution and Alliances at Encompass Corporation. Uh, Nick, great to see you today and thank you for joining us. Hey Matt, thanks for having me. Um, maybe to kick us off, Nick, uh, for people who, who may or may not know Encompass, maybe you could just give us a 30 second introduction to what you guys do and also what your role is with the company uh, today. Thanks, Matt. So Encompass is, in effect, a software company, uh, and we focus our efforts on uh, the automation of KYC and client onboarding. Uh, what that actually means is we solve the, the complex problem um, of access to data in line with an institution's compliance requirements, and we automate that process of data collection and understanding, and then feed that into various platforms or into a standalone UI on behalf of the customer. Um, my role in the organization is to uh, look at the strategic alliances, the way in which we work with partners, focusing in on key uh, targeted partners, working with them to uh, solve for pain points they may have in the market, or look to be able to ingest additional data sets to complement the way in which we access data today. Very good. So, so I mean, we're talking about sort of KYC processes, onboarding processes, and, and gathering the data to to support those processes. Maybe just can give us a flavour of the types of sources that you guys collect, and and I, I guess from your point of view as well as as a as managing a lot of those uh, strategic relationships as well, the kind of uh, partners you guys work with as well to to sort of uh, I guess aggregate the the data sets there as well. Yeah, not a problem. So, so we see the world of uh, data, if you will. Where you know, I often uh, look to explain what Encompass is by saying what we're not. We're not a data company. Um, we access data and have those relationships with um, the, the the household names that we that we all come to know in, in this industry. Uh, and we bucket those into kind of two halves. One being a premium data set, which includes your your business data sets your screening, uh, your adverse media, and your IDNB suppliers. And then you've got your public data sets, which is, are your registries, regulators, and exchanges. Uh, the combination of which, um, in line with you know, regulatory requirements and compliance policies, um, puts us into the bracket of kind of this initial due diligence process. Uh, and through, some, um, you know, through our software and the, the, the policy logic that we apply, we can pull and aggregate, as you refer to, all of this information in line with those specific requirements um, and pull that information through a single API and then supply that either into a CLM, uh, an additional workflow, or as I say, uh, into our standalone UI. The, the benefit of that obviously is you, you, you get the, the benefits of automation, speed, onboarding, you get the standardized process. Um, so you're following the same process every single time. Uh, you, of course, are reducing human error rates uh, because of the way in which we access the data, but we're pulling back data and documents. So you're pulling back that evidential proof, uh, and then we bring that information to life through visualization. Um, so looking at your corporate hierarchy, understanding ultimate beneficial ownership, and then being able to build through that information, depending on the use case for the customer, in um, what you can look as, uh, you know, follow on search, deeper dives, adding additional information. But depending on the customers, you know, your your larger tier one um, financial institutions are, are looking for data access. They're looking for access mm -hmm. to that information and they're looking through that as a, as a single API and that's what Encompass brings them. So, so, I mean, it's all about, well, it's not all about, I guess, I guess the point here is not all about time saving. It's also about the control that you get and the consistency and, and predictability of that as well. Absolutely. Who, who, whose roles are, you know, when you're, when you're talking to institution, whose roles are we kind of talking about here in terms of, well, this is really going to, you know, help them, as you said, it's part of the initial due diligence process. Is it, is it generally the sort of the KYC analyst team, the KY, KYC operations teams that, that are, you know, the main beneficiary here? Yeah, sure. I mean, again, depending who we're talking to, I think there's, you know, there's very much this notion of we're not looking to replace people within an organization. Yes, software and uh, um, taking on services that can do, in effect, what an analyst does, does not necessarily mean that that individual is replaced. Mm. What we actually look to position this at is we want to repurpose that analyst up the value chain. So doing the very kind of complex manual tasks today, which we know exist in large corporations, especially in the corporate and institutional space, is 
by being able to automate and standardize the collection of that information in line with those policies, we can then provide that information to the analyst to make a risk-based decision on the output. Mm. And that's hugely mm. important. So again, it all comes down to volume and the way in which we do that. But um, yes, KYC, KYC analysts, it's a replication of the manual tasks that they would process in a bank, but we're just doing it mm. faster, better, and to a higher quality. And what do you say to people who, I mean, a lot of these institutions will already have, you know, one of these, maybe these premium data sets and they'll, they'll be using that and, and maybe they'll have some screening data as well. And they go, well, look, we've got this data already. I'm not really sure what, what you guys bring to the party here. What's, what sort of, um, what's the argument or the benefit that they can have from actually bringing this in together in, in one, in one place? Yeah, sure. So I think that's probably one of the, the key differentiators of Encompass is, the combination of that public data with their premium data set. So when we work with customers, it's, it's of course understanding their preference around access or those data sets that they have a preference to um, working with. And we look to um, take those API keys and bake that into our policies and, our, uh, and the requirements in line with those compliance policies of theirs. And by extracting it from the multiple sources uh, and doing a simultaneous search, against those databases, combining that with the, the public data access and providing the evidential proof uh, is, is a major benefit, right? Because you're having analysts in processes. Now, an analyst could be onboarding as a BAU function or a remediation exercise where you, you obviously have a, a ticking clock from the regulator to, to evidence your, your, you've started the work. Um, by doing the simultaneous search, you, you of course are, are have the ability to do larger volumes. So you have a, a better throughput. Um, you have the, on the quality piece, uh, you have a better outcome because your QC or Q, um, QA function uh, it has a better throughput um, just because of the standardized way in which information is being collected. But we work with the customer and their preferred suppliers. And because we have those integrations pre-baked into our solution, we give that flexibility around access to data. We're not mm -hmm. uh, determining a, a singular way of, of client onboarding or KYC or you know initial due diligence, we really say, what is your process? Who do you want to access and what information do you want to access? And we'll automate that information for you and then provide it in a very streamlined fashion. Maybe maybe just touching on that point then. So you know in terms of people coming and saying, okay, we well, don't just hand over a KYC profile, it's it's a conf it's a configuration here. And also, you know, you're very much looking at the policy of the the institution as well how do you guys take the policy from the institution and really bake that into the process here and, and how's that translation happen yeah so so policy and i refer to compliance policy transferred into a data process policy possibly um we're, we're not in the business of advisory um encompass does not advise customers what they do should do or shouldn't do from a regulatory standpoint what we look at is those requirements in line with either jurisdictional, regulatory, um, or the, the actual use case itself. Um, and when we look at those policies, we um, will then map and put in rules and logic into those policies, which we refer to as policies, which is really that data process policy in terms of how, what percentage do you want to go down to ultimate beneficial ownership? What evidential proof do you want to pull back from sources? For instance, if I go to a registry, do I want to extract everything available or do I want to extract a specific document? Uh, and then you've also got the challenge which analysts have, and it probably goes back to your initial question was, if an analyst is um, looking to obtain information following a manual, um, they are going to websites, they're going to standalone portals, they may have an API integration that pre-populates their CLM, but they're going to multiple um, sources to, to obtain this information. You then also have an issue around paid for information, which um, Encompass solves for the automation of that process in terms of accessing um, uh, and automating the collection, including the documentation and proof. So, I mean, I mean, from a from a sort of financial institutions perspective, on what you talked about earlier, you guys integrate with of, often the system, the sort of workflow system that the bank is using to manage the case effectively, an onboarding case or a remediation case. A lot of this, a lot of what we're talking about here is is almost the stuff that's going to happen under the hood. 
to sort of bring stuff really quickly to the surface to allow them to then process the case even quicker, right? So you're, you're talking about integrating with CLM systems and uh, onboarding systems, is that right? So just in terms of picturing, I guess people picturing how this works in terms of the process. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I think, you know, the, the, the common practice here is large uh, multinational financial institutions will have a CLM, a workflow, a process that they their analysts will work on or work with. Where we fit in is that, um, yeah, you can call it a data bucket. It's, it's that starting point of what you feed into the CLM. And the benefits there are really the pre-population of those fields. You know, we're not a CLM, that's another position. We are not a CLM, but we complement the CLM because of the way in which we can, one, provide that CLM a singular API, so integration to one uh, and access to multiple. Um, but then following that uh, institution's um, requirements and pre-populating workflows for that analyst to do things better and faster. I mean, you guys work with a number of you know, top tier financial institutions, but um, and maybe we'll touch on that in a, in a second. But what are the kind of institutions where this process works really well you're talking about here? So, uh, you, you know, I know you guys work with law firms as well, financial institutions. Maybe you can just expand a little bit on the types of organizations you work with and, and where it works really well as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the common question is, where, where does the problem exist? Where, every, where any institution has an obligation to provide evidential proof around KYC and client onboarding, um, that's where we can solve or at least assist in the process. Um, of course, the larger uh, corporate institutional um, um, space is, you know, it's a lot more complex, the volumes are higher. So automation or software that provides assistance in that space is uh, of bigger benefit. It's not to say there isn't an obligation or requirements, as you say, to other sectors. Uh, our customer base spans across uh, tier one financial institutions, uh, non, uh, non-banking financial um, businesses, uh, but also your payment service providers, your your corporates, your 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 legal sector, uh, and then you've also got uh, you know the spin-off where you have um, customers of ours who are partners who are looking at solutions uh, and platform play and bringing together you know data sets and using our software in a way that could solve for that for that pain point as well. Mm. I mean bringing in any any new technology is always to, to sort of one of these more complex organizations and, and they often are complex it is always challenging um what are some of the sort of key things that from maybe a financial institution's perspective they need to kind of uh get very clear on or, or as they're onboarding a, a say income you know encompass in your products and solutions here what what would you be kind of the few recommendations of the steps they need to go through as well on their side of things they need to kind of get in place to to make sure that they can they can do this successfully yeah that's that, that's a good question Matt. so you know, the, i think the, the the point is no no bank is the same um you can look at some of the challenges and you know we can talk about it later if you want uh, around utility models and bringing a group of banks together they all have you know, um, same requirements, but different ways of getting there. Uh, and that's the same when we look to work with these different institutions as, you know, one of the one of the, the points that would help is really kind of a clear understanding of um, ways of working that's documented and that can be shared with the likes of a reg tech, fintech, giving them clarity on the way in which they can operate with the software. You know, it is a challenge. Um, you know, the, the change that, the, you know, reg techs, fintechs can bring uh, to an institution are, are, are immense, but it's not going to happen overnight. So part of that process and what we do um, to assist that is something what we call a proof of value, uh, where it's really kind of evidencing the, um, the, the benefits and really bring it to life for that institution that a business case is in effect created. Uh, and then they can execute on that, which then shortens the implementation cycle. Uh, but it's really about understanding the ways of working, having a dedicated team from that financial institution that can support and invest in um, that implementation also goes a long way. I mean, I mean, we know operating on the change side of things, how important sort of looking at the, the whole process holistically is to kind of the, su- the su- success of this type of implementation, right? So it's not just, okay, well, let's look at, 
the process you do today, but also, okay, well, look, let's see how we can best leverage this reg tech or this solution to, to kind of transform your process as well and see how you can, how you can really sort of make a step change here. Um, there's obviously a huge data um, exercise here as well in terms of, okay, well, look, you're presenting, you're, you're going out there and getting all this data, but how does that fit? You know, this huge mapping exercise to the internal data and how that's going to fit into the, inter the, uh, the, you know, the institution's data, data model as well. How big a challenge does, does that, and, and is that one of the major hurdles, I guess, that, that needs to be overcome during the implementation of, of, of Encompass? Yeah, of course. I think that you know your our larger tier one um, customers are are looking at a data play. They want access to data. How does that work for them? You know, they will have preferences, and you know, some will have hundreds of sources that they access. And the, the benefit that we're kind of look to bring them in that process is an understanding of how can we feed that into your systems and enrich your data lakes. As an example, um, it's a large exercise, and you know. In most cases, that, that financial institution is also working with consultancy, solving that problem for the bank on their side. Um, but you know, our role in this is really about giving that access, giving that ease in which they can feed that information into their systems. I mean, you talked about the, the utility model as well. I know you guys are part of the Nordic utility uh, KYC utility project that's going on there as well. I think it's really interesting uh, that, I mean, we've seen a few utility models uh, attempted um, to, to greater or lesser uh, success. How are the Nordics approaching this challenge differently in your view? And, and how are you guys playing a part in that as well? Sure. Um, another great question. Um, you know, we've seen these utilities come in and out and um, some have uh, succeeded, some have failed. Um, the, the challenge of the utility and, the, you know, I think the word utility is a, is a, it can be a dangerous word or misinterpreted very easily. Um, it's a view as to how can we create a common standard. Um, and the, the, you know, the, the Nordic utility took a technology led approach um, as opposed to trying to solve for the common policy or standard policy that when you would, or what you would need when you bring um, multiple banks together, you know, you've got issues around cross jurisdictional requirements or uh, investment. I think there's also a point to say, you know, having consensus and equally investing in a, an approach um, will, will help uh, bringing this to life. Um, but our role in that was really to give flexibility, scalability to a new service in effect that had, that could not be benchmarked, but it was giving that uh, ability as an, as an, in a way, an integration layer um, to assist the process of forming um, what is now the, the Nordic KYC utility called Invidim. And for people who maybe don't know too much about that project, is that is that um, then, as you said, it's a technology-led project. Is there, st is there a heavy, is there, are they trying to provide a service as well? Or is it very much the, look, we'll give you the technology and we'll build the, the, the backbone for this, but you very much then each bank can take, can use that technology um, and data, et cetera? No, it's still very much a service. Um, you know, uh, we, we also know uh, in general, financial institutions uh, will operate either in silo or have different departments that will follow different processes. Um, what the Nordic utility is doing is providing a service uh, to the invested financial institutions um, and they our, our, our involvement that is to provide some of the backbone technology that is being used uh, to form that service. But the output uh, is still going to have um, a human intervention uh, in the collation and collection um, uh, as provided by the software and technology um, uh, partners, uh, but mm -hmm. they are then providing the output to those individual uh, invested financial institutions. I mean, it'll be super interesting to see, you know, the success or, or not, you know, hopefully the success of that project is, as others, have, as you said, haven't been so successful. Um, there's obviously been, I mean, that's one of the sort of trends, I guess, that has been around for, for a few years now in terms of what's what's been changing. But I mean, a huge amount has changed over the last five years or so in in kyc in in reg tech uh, what are sort of the main trends you're seeing at the moment where do you think sort of what do you what, especially maybe since since COVID hit as well i know that's accelerated a lot of the sort of digital transformation what what else are you or what are you seeing as the major trends and maybe what, what do you see over the next sort of couple of years as well yeah 
so I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head really there is one of the trends, you know, for sure is a shift in the way in which financial institutions are looking to work with reg techs. You know, the, the whole, given the, the, the current circumstances, it's changed the way we work. It's, it's changed the way in which we need to work in terms of either a heavily people operated business or the way in which they could leverage things more effectively um, as well. I think, you know, we're, we're starting to see um, the, the bigger tier ones leverage a lot more fintechs and regtechs. I think we're starting to see, you know, there, there, there is um, this complexity we have where you have this, um, you know, multiple uh, suppliers in the market, um, all selling KYC, all selling um, AML. But what is it actually that they do? And I think we'll start to see, um, you know, a few players kind of deepening knowledge in specific parts. You'll start to see uh, a combination of vendors coming together, um, you know, either by complementing certain parts of workflows where the full end-to-end -end experience can really be valued by that um, financial institution. Um, access to data has always been an issue. Um, you, you, we now have vendors in the market one of, our, one of them is Encompass, where we uh, can provide that access to data more seamlessly. Um, so I think those are some of the, some of the things we're seeing. Um, you know, remediation is not going away. Um, you know, the, the problems and the, the, the issues that they have in that are not going away. Uh, but technology is, is starting to be proven. Um, and I think, you know, that, that, is, a, that is a big uh, plus factor for companies like ourselves. You know, we're evidencing the value. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that access point will, will, will consistently change. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, we're definitely seeing, a, I think you, you, you touched on it there, a sort of maturing of the market. A lot of, the, a lot of new vendors who came into the market, you know, six, seven years ago, now pretty, you know, get into that maturity stage and, and some are even being, you know, acquired now and, and moving into that next stage of their journey as well. You know, I think, um, as you said, people are, I think the banks are getting more comfortable with working with with external uh, suppliers, you know, software providers in specific areas where, where they can where they can help. What what do you see as some of the main challenges still in terms of at the, the industry in terms of improving, you know, generally KYC, AML prevention? Um, because obviously that that maybe there's slightly broader topic than just in terms of what encompasses is, is is tackling but yeah. um yeah what are some of the main challenges that you see still so i think you know if we look back um four or five years ago we there's uh, this concept of continuous monitoring keeping a live record keeping information continually uh, continuously up to date i think we're still challenged with that um you know there there are vendors that have definitely tackled this problem um i think financial institutions probably are on the journey of tackling it. Um, but because of the way in which they've historically run and operated and the way in which they have, you know, internal and external data and bringing that together to, to find this, you know, ultimate kind of um, live record, if you will, uh, I think that, that that is still a challenge, but there are, as I say, suppliers that can, can solve for it in part. Um, so I think that's still going to continue. Um, but, as an industry, um, we're, we're, we're continuously challenged, right? Regulation changes. How do, we, how do we remain flexible in that space? And I think, you know, vendors, smaller uh, companies that are more agile can operate and uh, provide solutions um, for those problems where historically you've probably had, you know, your larger consultancies that would solve for, for many problems. Mm. No, yeah, 100%. 100 I think, um, I, I think that's, that's definitely right. I mean, you guys are hundred. What well, really, really focus on the data data problem, right? As well, and and what maybe just to to sort of finish that thought off is really, you know, around the data. What's the what's some of the biggest challenges you guys face in in terms of getting that data in? Still, I mean, as as you said, you guys use a variety of sources from from premium sort of sources to to publicly available obviously there's some big changes going on in that space particularly you know us re recent recent announcements there around the transparency of of beneficial ownership but what are some of the main challenges you guys still see in, in terms of getting that getting access to data maybe in different regions in, in different languages um and, and really getting that full picture which i know you guys are all and that's what you're all about right 
Yeah, the 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 access to all the, the you know the data world is 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 very wide and varied, as you say. Some data um, assets are are easier to integrate and keep up to date. And I think one of the 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 challenges that will always be there is um, monitoring of public data sources and keeping that information you know available to a customer. Uh, the way in which you know you can obtain information either through an API or through um, access to to a public website. Uh, is it can change um, and the way in which you need to look to maintain that information um, is paramount to the customer. Uh, I guess you've also got challenging jurisdictions as well. Uh, you've got delays in some inf access to some information. And, and again, if you're looking at, from an, at an attribute level, some information is just not available um, uh, without client outreach. So there is a, there is a balance. Um, there's definitely a large chunk that we um, uh, can obtain. And you also then look at a customer's book of business and where they're doing business. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at that across the board, you probably only got around 30% that might fall into the challenging category. Hmm. How important do you see the sort of role of ecosystems then, um, you know, the ecosystems that sort of developing within, within different partnerships and, and different suppliers in terms of solving some of these challenges as well? Yeah, uh, look, I think partnerships and coming together in ecosystems is the way uh, of the future. Um, you know, we're starting to see if we take a, a data supplier, historically data suppliers sold their data, that's what they did, and they were very good at it. Today, they probably are challenged in a way where they need to not reinvent, but look at different ways in which they could solve for common pain points. And that may mean coming together with another data supplier. That may mean... Uh, having a better way of making their own data sets that don't talk to each other available to a supplier. So, you know, you then look at the partnerships where you have your CLM space. You know, we play in exactly the same space that they do, but we are complementary in terms of coming together to, again, make the client's experience that more streamlined. So I think, you know, I, I touched on it earlier, you're definitely going to have players that all interact with each other. Um, you know, I, I, I work in the space of, you know, looking at ways of trying to come together. Um, you know, we'll see some, some vendors fall away and we'll definitely see some coming together. But mm. the vendors coming together play a certain part. And that part may be transaction monitoring. That may be ongoing monitoring. That may be initial due diligence. Uh, that may be workflow. Uh, but mm. together, we can all play in the same space. Uh, but we'll probably see a few key players um, starting to become more prominent in the market. And, and, and what do you think the next few years then for Encompass looks like? Obviously, uh, what you guys have done today is very kind of very clear and very focused. Is it is it sort of definitely still focused in that space and just expanding the coverage, expanding the depth, expanding, you know, what, what does the next few look, years look like on, on your roadmap? And, and, and so what's the vision for you guys? Sure. Um, I think it's, you know, there's when if we look back two years ago, there's there was possibly some gray, not specifically at us, but more in the space itself to say who does what. Um, you know, I think uh, any company is going to look to um, solve problems, and some may do it better. You can take adverse media as an example. Um, there are adverse uh, specific companies that look at adverse media capabilities, and they've mm -hmm. deepened their pockets in that. I think we will definitely carry on going down the path of deepening our pockets around what we do in that initial due diligence space and the access to information. Uh, I think we'll definitely increase uh, our coverage. So looking at jurisdictional um, expansion, um, we've recently expanded into a number of jurisdictions. Um, we will then also be looking at uh, North America uh, in the coming months. So it would be expanding our geographical presence for sure. Um, but I think staying focused on the, the, the kind of the core complex uh, issue that we address around access to data. Perfect. I think that's a great note to probably to probably finish on as it's so nicely, nicely put there, Nick. So, look, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, good luck uh, for the for the upcoming months and expansion into the US as well, as you just touched on and obviously uh, further into the future as well. Many thanks, Matt.